The hot hatch is in danger of disappearing altogether. We're unlikely to see another Ford Fiesta ST or a Focus RS. Renault Sport has basically evaporated. We do still have the Honda Civic Type R, which is good news, but that's now a 50,000 pound car. So is the time right for a complete reinvention of what the hot hatch is? Hyundai reckons it is, which is why it's unleashed its end division on its very good looking crossover slash hatchback thingy, the Ionic 5. And this then, unsurprisingly, is the Ionic 5N. What we have here then is a pure electric hot hatch with 600 horsepower. In fact, if I hit this button, N Grin Boost, I get an extra 41 horsepower, 641 horsepower for 10 second bursts. Now, I need to mention that this is a prototype vehicle, it's a pre production car, but everything seems to work, including the launch control function, which I shall activate right now. Launch control, there we go. Now, supposedly, this car will do 0 to 62 in 3.4 seconds and hit 167 miles an hour flat out. So to demonstrate how silly quick this thing is, I've arranged a little race. That over there is the Honda Civic Type R, 324 horsepower, unequivocally not a slow car, but I've got a feeling it's about to get lunched. Right, foot on the brake, foot flat on the throttle, release the brake. Even I can't get that wrong. Three, two, one, go! Oh my word! That Honda is a dot in the background. Oh, oh that was ridiculous. We all know the way that electric cars accelerate. No let up, no torque interruption, but yeah, this is a quick one. The question is, was Rowan in the Honda Civic Type R having more fun with his manual gearbox than I was in this? Probably, yes. But in a straight line, this car is faster. Much, much faster. <laughs> Okay, so I've had to pull over because there are so many modes and settings in this car that if I attempted to demonstrate them to you on the move, I'm likely to crash. So I'm gonna start with the steering wheel. The first button here is your drive mode toggle that moves you through eco, normal sport, your standard drive modes. Um, on the right here, it's marked NGB for N Grin Boost, which is a slightly embarrassing name, isn't it? That's the extra 41 horsepower boost that you get for 10 seconds. Down here we've got an N button, hit that and that puts us into our N custom mode. So that's the powertrain, the steering, the suspension all dialed up to their more aggressive settings. Defaults to ESC Sport, but we're going to turn ESC off completely by pressing and holding this button down here. That's done. I should say the paddles right now are set to change the level of regen. You've got four levels of regen there. But if I hit this other end button, then that toggles my speedometer to a rev counter. The significance of that is because if we go over here into this screen, then we can start playing around with the noise that this car makes. Now I have rehearsed this before. Let's hope I can make my way through the menu. We'll hit the circuit button there, settings there, and go into N active sound. So currently we're in ignition which is a sort of simulation of an internal combustion engine i can give it a rev you can hear those little pops and bangs on the overrun down here we have evolution so it says experience the evolutionary future sound of electric n yeah not sure about that it's sort of a tinnier quieter sound and then down at the bottom, we have supersonic. Accelerate to supersonic speeds with the powerful thrust sound inspired by fighter jets. It sounds exciting. It's, yeah, it's whooshy, it's zingy. It's not for me. I'm gonna go back to ignition. Who would have thought the fake internal combustion engine sound is the one that I prefer? Right, what else have we got? So up here, NE shift, now this, is very clever. It is 
essentially a fully simulated eight-speed paddle shift gearbox. It will interrupt the torque when you hit the paddle. It will change the sound that the car makes. You can actually bounce off the rev limiter. Very interested to see how that thing works. At the top here we have N launch control. Of course we used that for our drag race earlier. Now I'm going to go out of this mode into N mode to our track settings. So various toggles to play with here. The first is N pedal. Now N pedal is essentially a highly aggressive regen system that you can use on track. So when you lift off the throttle, um, you're immediately on the brakes and it helps turn the car in. N race, that is essentially a battery preconditioning mode. It helps with the cooling of the battery. It says, warning, may make a bit of extra noise, but who cares? It's designed to help keep the battery cool when you're hammering around the track. And then at the top here, we have something called N torque distribution. Now, basically that allows me to switch between 100% front wheel drive or 100% rear wheel drive or anything in between. Alternatively, you can hit N drift optimizer at the bottom. Now this bungs a load of torque to the back. It tweaks the ESC. It plays with the suspension. It basically creates the conditions that should make this thing an absolute doddle to drift. Have I missed anything? I probably have, but to be honest, my brain only has so much capacity and it's already overloaded. Should we give this thing a go? Now this is, as I said, this fully simulated eight speed flappy paddle gearbox, um, which cuts the torque. You can see as I upshift there, that cuts the noise. There's a little torque interruption. We'll turn into this hairpin bend here, second gear. We've got the ESC off, so. <laughs> I tell you what, this is the feature I was definitely most intrigued to try out because ultimately with an electric car, you just have one constant band of torque. Mm -hmm. You just get all the torque, a flat line of acceleration all the way through, but this actively interrupts it. Why? To make it feel like a combustion engine car, to give you more to do. And I have to say straight away, it's way better than I thought it would be. Way better. You've got something to do with your fingers. Look, I'm in third gear and I'm feathering the throttle rather than basically having all the torque whenever you want it. You have a much greater sense of your speed and the fake noise. So the fake noise is obviously a big part of this. The way that it blips and downshifts, the way that the tone changes, it tells you how you're getting on. It gives you a red line to chase after. The hilarious thing is they could have put the red line anywhere. They've given us 8,000 RPM, modest. They could have done something silly, 11,000 RPM, go Gordon Murray chasing, but they haven't. It's hard to describe why this feels better, but it just does. It gives you an extra connection between human and car. And there we go. It's very happy to, to drift around. We got the ESC off, but we're not in any of the fancy drift modes yet. We're just trying out this gearbox and apologies to the pauses in my delivery here because I'm just trying to get my head around why I like this thing so much. You can tell it's fake. Let's be honest, that noise is clearly being piped in through the speakers, but I'll tell you this, it's good enough that when I'm concentrating on driving around this track and not binning it into the Armco, I'm not thinking it's fake. I'm just enjoying the noise. I'm enjoying being wrapped up in it. I'm enjoying the little kick in the back when you shift down. All right, let's go hard on the brakes here. Hard, down to second, toss it in. Bit of understeer there. Dial it out with the throttle. And the really interesting thing is there's actually a rev limiter. 
there it is, there's me bouncing off the rev limiter in second. It cuts the torque. It stops you going any faster. They really have worked every angle on this. Okay, color me impressed. Right, next up, we're gonna go into N Drift Optimizer. So you have to stop, put the foot hard on the brake and then activate N Drift Optimizer. And there we go, now we're off. Now you can't use the N E Shift in this. So there are no gears to play with. It's just a brake pedal and your right foot. And straight away, you can feel this is 100% rear wheel drive. Obviously there are some electronic nannies looking after you, but you can feel straight away. There's a lot of power going to the rear axle and it wants to drift everywhere. So let's have a go. This is the tight hairpin, AKA drift corner here at Speed Week. Oh, ho, ho. yes, it works. And I tell you what, it's a little bit like CT off mode in a Ferrari where it makes you feel like you're doing it all yourself, but really you're not. It's looking after you. It's keeping you within the bounds that could end up with a crash. It's a shame you can't use the paddle shift when you're in this special drift mode because that would give you something else to do. That would create that experience even closer to a combustion engine car or a DCT gearboxed hot hatch. Here we come into our tight corner again, toss it in early on the throttle. Oh, that's a big angle. I'm getting more confident. The angles are getting bigger. The review right now is going on between my ears. Could you see it? I was genuinely didn't know what to expect when I woke up this morning. I thought there's a lot to get your head around with this car. There's a lot of complicated electronics, but does it deliver on the track? Is it good fun? So far, yes it is. Okay, so last thing that we need to test, and this is the N Torque Kick. Now, essentially, this is replicating um, a clutch kick, and you turn in, you need to be on the throttle, pull both paddles, and then when you release them, oh, it gives you a bung of torque and kicks the car sideways. Oh, I quite like that, actually. The interesting thing about that is you can be completely accurate with where you want the car to be going sideways, which is pretty much everywhere at the moment. <laughs> oh, this thing's an animal, an absolute animal. Here we go, let's try some more of that torque kick function. So turn in, on the throttle, kick. Ah, it was bound to happen, wasn't it? It was bound to happen. Look, it's my job to find the outer parameters of a car's behavior and there I did but it's good fun because you turn in on the throttle hold the paddles it interrupts the torque and then when you release them it gives you all that torque and more back to just kick you sideways excellent as a motoring journalist for precision driving when a photographer tells you he wants it x amount of sideways on this corner here we go interrupt the torque let go So what about this car then? I've been spending too much time playing with my electric toys to actually review how it drives around this track. Well, it's heavy. I mean, no surprises there, right? It's a two ton electric hot hatch. Does it feel like that? Nah, it feels lighter. The suspension is taut, but not too taut. When I turn in here, you can feel all that mass leans towards the outside. Ah! But you've got so much power, the understeer isn't really a problem because you just steer it on the throttle. As long as you've got ESC off or you're in this end drift optimizer mode, you can just give it more throttle, tighten your line and off you go. My word, are these things just gimmicks? That's the question, isn't it? Are people gonna buy this car, take it to a racetrack and actually use these things? When I was thinking about this video, my answer was unequivocally, nah, no one's gonna buy a big 65, 70 grand electric Hyundai hot hatch and take it to a racetrack. But now I've changed my mind. They might be gimmicks. Please don't use them on the road or in the Sainsbury's car park because this is a big, heavy car pulling some quite serious angles, but take it to a racetrack, have a play because this car has some 
genuine agility, and best of all, a proper sense of humour. Speaking of gimmicks, this is the Arbath 500e. It's a little mini 149 horsepower electric hot hatch that seems to think it's some sort of V8 muscle car. It's pumping out all this sound from a speaker beneath the bottom of the car. Give it a rev. What do you reckon? I'm not so sure. I reckon you'll probably show your mates that and then switch it off forever but it does raise an interesting point about where you draw the line with all this synthesized fun what makes one electronic gimmick acceptable and another one a total cringe something to think about but back to the hyundai ionic 5n so it has sledgehammer straight line performance we already knew that but it takes all this electronic trickery to a whole new level i'll be honest i was prepared to write this thing off as a faker as no fun but honestly once you get your head around all those modes it's huge amounts of fun it's a proper hot hatch a hyper hatch even this thing just not as we know it my word Woo. great job Hyundai really good the Hyundai N division hats off. This is something completely different, something completely new, and you've pulled it out of the bag again. 